Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to tonight's second half, a second half that gets us that much closer to tonight's Saturday Nightmares, our live stream at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope to see you all there. Before we get into tonight's second half, though, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click that like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And folks, they definitely do matter. Now everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's second half, shall we? Today's first subscriber submitted experience. Hey Jeff, this is my experience, the War Valley Monster. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. The oldest and strongest kind of fear is the fear of the unknown, H.P. Lovecraft. Hey everyone, my name is Adam. I live in Northeast Tennessee. I have nothing to gain from sharing this experience, and I've only told a handful of people outside of my family and a few friends. It happened a while ago, and I've gone through many stages of denial and acceptance over the years. I like to think that I'm a rational person and have a pretty good head on my shoulders. I like to approach things with a healthy do dose of skepticism. I've seen and experienced a lot of things over the course of my life that cannot be explained. But that's for another time. All I know is the experience I'm about to share was a formative experience that led me down a rabbit hole of curiosity about cryptids, the paranormal, and the unknown. My father was an avid hunter outdoorsman and wanted his son to experience and appreciate the raw beauty of nature, wildlife, and hunting. The timeline when this occurred had to be between 1993 or 4. I would have been either 11 or 12. I had recently graduated from the hunter safety course. And when you complete that course, you are allowed to bag one doe as your first kill. I can't remember if it was actually the season. I just remember the stipulation. The area that we were in and we had camped many times before was about 30 to 40 minutes from me called War Valley. My dad had an old camper. And usually it was just him and I camping at the time this happened. The area is very rocky, thick, and unforgiving terrain. The road leading to this place was just an old two-lane country road. Then you had to turn onto a gravel road that became a two-track on down. And eventually the road literally turned into a creek. Not far before the trail ends, there was a cattle gate. And that is how you enter the property. The entire property is surrounded by barbed wire fence for the most part. He always parked his camper beside the creek. Past where the camper would have been parked was mostly pastures, a small Christmas tree farm, and the rest was thick woods. If you went deep enough into said woods, you would find caves, sinkholes, and some animal bones in and around them. And I always got a weird feeling every time I went to that area of the woods, so I really didn't make too much of a habit out of it. <clears throat> My dad always liked to get there early and get an early start on hunting, so we were up several hours before daylight. I had been in the deer blind that is in the middle of a group of trees in the middle of a clearing that is surrounded by dense forest on three sides. I had been waiting quietly and patiently in this area for what seemed like hours and had not seen a sign of any deer, or any wildlife hardly at that matter, maybe some birds and an occasional squirrel. 
Me being the age I was, I couldn't sit in one place for too long, so I decided it was time to start walking back to camp. I remember this place had a lot of cedar trees. On my left, walking back to the camper, there was a thick grove of cedar. I remember before it happened, a silence fell over the valley. I started to feel uneasy, like I was being watched. All of a sudden, in the grove of cedar, I see an enormous silhouette of a figure. It had to be at least eight feet tall, bipedal, very broad in the shoulders. It had long, dark fur all over its body. I never got a good look at the creature's face because, almost as fast as I saw this thing, it let out the most blood-curdling sound that would make the most hardened survivalist's blood turn cold. The only way that I've been able to describe it was something between a vicious roar and a scream. The sound of this creature would be impossible for any human being to make in terms of sheer volume, pitch, and timber. I remember an awful stench in the air filling my nostrils. It never came out of the cedar tree line to my knowledge, as far as I can remember. When I started running, I never once looked back. I was absolutely terrified. I was carrying my old Chinese SKS semi-automatic rifle, but I didn't want to stick around and press my luck with this creature. When I got back to the camper, which was around 250 to 300 yards from the spot I was hunting, my father was nowhere to be found. When he finally showed up, I had to unlock the camper to let him in. I had barricaded myself inside with my rifle in hand, and he clearly saw the fear in my face and knew something was wrong. I asked him where he had been, and he told me that he was up on the mountain on the opposite side of the valley looking for a new spot to set up a stand. He said that he had heard something, but didn't know what it was or where it had come from. I believe we camped the following night, and I couldn't sleep at all. The sound of the wood knocking, whooping, and chattering that night following my encounter, and the terror that was, and still is, incredibly real, was enough for me. That was the last time that I ever stayed the night on that property. I still love nature and animals, and I have a healthy respect for all things wild, but that experience made me feel very uneasy about returning to that place. My dad passed away in 2007, and I have not returned to this area in many years. He had a good friend and hunting buddy, a former Green Beret, who was a pretty tough guy. He was the highest decorated veteran from the Vietnam War in the state of Tennessee, and apparently he saw the same thing I did and swore he would never return to that place again even after the brutal things he had seen on the other side of the world decades before. You could tell that something scared him, just as bad as it scared me, an 11 or 12 year old boy. I can't help but think that somewhere down there, deep in those woods, this creature still roams the land. And who knows, there may even be a population. Was it Bigfoot? I don't know. I'm pretty sure maybe. I can tell you the sound this thing had made in the back of my mind and still makes the hair stand every time I think about it. The mental scar, the emotional damage this encounter has done to me has stuck with me for my entire life. I'm always vigilant every time I enter the woods. Thank you for sharing my experience, Jeff. I hope it made sense and that I remembered all of the details, even though it happened very fast. Like I said, I've only shared this with a few people before now. If you're ever out in the woods, stay safe, listen, and be aware of your surroundings. Sincerely, Adam. Wow, what an absolutely horrifying encounter. Um, you know, it, it's crazy. The encounters that people have endured... And, um, you know, I start this channel because I had my experience in 1994 and I wanted to create a platform for people to share and every time I hear someone's encounter, I think back to mine and 
I'm thankful when I saw what I saw that night that I was in a car and not in an open space. Right? We saw the eyes in the woods, but I didn't see what those eyes were attached until we were in a car and turning north towards town. Anyway, tonight's second encounter is from a subscriber who has been with the channel for a while. She's been at every live stream. And uh, it's taken her a while to share her experience, but here's Joe's experience. Jeff, I want to take a moment and thank you for all of your hard work and dedication you have and continue to give to the research community and the channel. Thank you for supporting people and giving them a non-biased platform to share their encounters and experiences. I found your channel three years ago while recovering from ankle surgery. I admired everyone who was brave enough to come forward and share their experiences. I have spent my childhood, up until my young adulthood, being bullied and tormented for being Native American. Out of a hundred students in our class, there were only three of us that were Native. When my encounter happened, I was so scared of the abuse that I would endure if I came forward. I felt crazy enough and spent many days wondering if I had finally lost it. Jeff, I sent you Google Map shots of the location and drew the route I took. I sometimes have trouble explaining things clearly. In the photo of my last childhood at home, it's hard to see, but there is a 10-foot tall chain-link fence that separated our backyard from a parking lot. Late spring, 1986, I was 15 years old. I was excited to get my first job outside of babysitting. I started working as a paper boy for the Portland Press-Herald, Main Sunday Telegram. The paper route took me all over a large area of Lincoln. The courier dropped off my route stack at the corner of Morgan Street and Main Street at around 3 in the morning. Through summer, I didn't have any creepy crawly feelings. I would even stop at the Matawakak Lake, a.k.a. Lincoln Beach, to go for a swim when I was done with my job. I would swim from the main beach to the end of my street. My street, Lakeview Street, was tarred right up to the water's edge. I always got out at Mr. Heath's lawn. I had no worries at that point. That started to change after school. We normally started back at around August 24th, give or take a few days. This felt like it was slowly creeping on. I started feeling like I was being watched. If I remember correctly, it was worse at Clay Funeral Home and a small walk space that connected to Mr. Clay's home. Down around Wilson Street, the trees were more dense, very dark between the homes. I would cut through the Bardeen side yard to hit the lower end of Lakeview Street. Around Mr. Heath's house, I would hear rustling noises and a low growl. I kept trying to convince myself that Mr. Heath got a new puppy, or possibly it was a coyote. The sounds I heard weren't every Sunday. Some new customers didn't leave payment on Sunday, no problem. I did Friday after school collections, knowing most people got paid on Friday. Now, in October, it got dark early. I was out collecting payment. I was at one customer's home. He hadn't paid in th six weeks. I gave him the paperwork stating if payment isn't paid in full by the next Friday, his paper subscription would be terminated and the company would be seeking payment by m lawful means. His home was located at the intersection of Main Street and School Street. I walked from the back side of the house to the main sidewalk I was heading home. I heard movement from the house adjacent to Mr. No Pay. It was scratching like nails being dragged down a tree. I snapped around. I saw a huge, dark-furred wolf-looking creature. Its eye shine looked golden amber. I'm 5'4". This majestic creature was on all fours and nearly as tall as me. The creature stared at me, dropping its head, pulling back its shoulders, showing me its teeth and did a low growl. I freaked out. There was no fight or flight at that moment. Only, I'm going to meet the spirit in the sky. 
I'm no meek two-spirit. I'm a hunter. I worked at a family-owned slaughterhouse. My biological dad, stepdad, and mom were all in law enforcement. My oddball uncle was in the Hells Angels. I love you, Uncle Blackie. Keep revving your Harley in heaven. Call forth the thunder. I was taught to stand my ground when it comes to my life. To understand me, I had no problems taking down a physical bully. It was the mental abuse that caused me to crumble. Anyway, all of the... All of the stands on your ground were gone. The only retaliation I felt I had was to make it work for his food. I took off like a bat out of hell. I took that path with the most obstacles for a large animal. I duck and wove between homes, trees, and such. I knew I would be most vulnerable between the end of the road that opened up into the junior high parking lot and the fence. I can't truly express the fear I had at the time. It has no meaning. I could hear it sniffing, running, and growling. I could smell strong urine. I got more scared when it got quiet. I made a break for the parking lot. I heard it hit the ground like he had jumped from a tree or a wolf or a roof. I refused to let myself ponder on that info. I just wanted to get home and get home safe. I made it to the fence. I hadn't climbed that thing so fast in my life. I ran past the back porch to the front of the house. I flew inside. I ran around locking all the doors and the windows and ran upstairs and hid in the bathtub. I pulled my cigarettes out of my pocket. I must have smoked five of them in a row. I went to my room. I looked out my bedroom window that faces the parking lot. The school had lights on the building that lit up that parking lot. I saw it by the door side corner, staring up at my window. I shit you not. That thing stood up. It was standing. All I could think was werewolf. I was screaming werewolf. They aren't real. What the hell? I had a hard time believing what I was seeing. I spent the whole night smoking weed. I begged my stepdad to take me around on Sunday. He agreed on the condition that I bake him some oatmeal cookies. On Sunday, I suggested to dad to pack heat. I gave the reason for coyotes. That was the worst of the encounters. I was too scared to tell anyone about this. I felt crazy. I gave up that paper route on the 1st of December. A few weeks later, there was a snowstorm. It was... My job to clean the snow off of roofs. I was the only one who wasn't afraid of heights. I opened my bedroom window to clean off the snow. I screamed. There was a bipedal wolf like footprints in the snow outside of my window. I looked over at the garage and sure enough, there were prints over that over on that roof. They must have seen The most I've seen in years in eyeshine. In 52 years now, I could care less if I'm not believed. I know what I went through. This may be a coincidence. My older sister, same dad, different mom, and I have Wolf as spirit guides. Our grandmother was a medicine healer. Grandma always told mom about a warrior soul I carried in my body. In the past few years, I've learned that what I saw was not a werewolf, but a dog man. This animal could have easily taken me down when he stood up at the corner of the school. His stance showed raw power. It resembled the werewolves from the movie Dog Soldiers, but this legs were hawked just like a wolf's. I spent years feeling like it was toying with me during that chase. I've been pondering the idea of my family's lineage and my spirit guide being the reason why I wasn't turned into crispy chicken on the run. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. I really appreciate you. uh, You know, they said they never shared this before. (laughs) Two amazing encounters to start the night off with. I got some more for you. Tonight's third subscriber submitted experience. I got a kick out of this one, and I think you guys will. 
just a tow operator who prays that I don't have an encounter. Morning, Jeff. I live in the great state of Georgia. Growing up as a kid, I always felt there were things in this world that can't be explained. Cryptids. All of these things I experienced in dreams, living in a home from five years old until I reached 18 with paranormal events. None that I experienced. My sister, mom, and dad did. While living in that home, I only experienced cryptid and dream, dogman crawlers, alien greys. Once I left the state on my naval career, the dream stopped. My family moved right after I left for the Navy. They never experienced anything like that again, and thank God. Listening to your channel is really a blessing, not just for me, but your other subscribers. I'm 50 years old now. I heard an incredible dogman encounter from a truck driver who drives locally through Macon, Georgia. I sent him your email to reach out to you. I haven't heard from him again, and that was six months ago. I've been listening to your channel on and off for 18 months, and when that tow truck driver told me his experience, I was not revealing what I knew about cryptids. I do a lot of roadside stands for big tow companies in Georgia, so this particular day I'm responding to a customer who is waiting for a tow. As I drive to their location, I see a gentleman pacing back and forth in the parking lot on his cell phone, which is actually my customer. Once I got him loaded, we were on our way and I could tell something was bothering him. My GPS was taking me on back roads and he asked, Hey, why are you taking back roads? I explained to him that I like to avoid traffic and meet my goals. He then began to let me know that he's a local truck driver for a parcel company and then explained why he would rather sit in traffic now than take back roads. He then explained his encounter. You're going to think I'm crazy, bro, but three weeks ago I was driving at night near Macon, Georgia on a back road just as we are doing. I noticed how quiet the night was. All of a sudden, checking my mirrors, I see something on the right side of my truck. Something is running and keeping up with the truck for about a quarter of a mile. I thought it was a deer, but as I slowed down, hoping not to hit it, but the closer it got, the more I'm seeing something very scary and int intimidating, now standing on its hind legs, looking like some sort of dog creature. I was so scared I just kept driving and didn't stop until I was at my drop station to unload. Now Jeff is listening to him. Now Jeff is listening to him and already listening to your channel. I'm convinced Dogman exists in this state. I so enjoy listening to your channel between roadside calls. Well, may the great spirit continue to bless you and your family. Thanks for all your hard work. If I ever experience an encounter, I'll be sure to reach out to you. <clears throat> so, I just thought that was so cool that, you know, he listens to the channel. He's never had an encounter, but he knows that these things exist. And um, that, crazy enough, he picks up does a tow for another truck driver and the truck driver tells him his experience. That is horrifying because where Dr. Nancy Shaw was, was lost her life was in that great state of Georgia at night. And, uh, her car was found on one side of the road with her driver's side door open and she was on the other in a ditch. These things are very cunning, very powerful, very dangerous. Cool encounter. Cool cool email. I love emails like that. It just made me smile. Anyway, let's get into the uh, next subscriber submitted experience. So during the live stream, um, I started to realize just how many people I have that don't live in the States. Uh, a lot of folks from the UK, Australia, Canada, um, the Caribbean. I had a woman from the Caribbean. Um, but then a young man who I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his first name, but I, I and you know, I, I didn't want to because I didn't want to mispronounce it. But 
His last name is Vang. And in the comment section, he said, my dad had a rock ape experience in Laos. My dad, my dad was in Laos and he had a rock ape experience. Um, he shared bits and pieces of it with me, but I said, hey, Vang, would you mind sharing that experience with me? And he said, yeah. And I said, it's, it's, it just, it blows me away that here I am from upstate New York. And this channel touches people from all over the world. It just, it never ceases to amaze me how big this community is. And how blessed I am to get to meet all of you. So thank you. On to Vang's dad's experience. Remember, he's from Laos, so here goes. Jeff, I remember my dad telling me when he used to go hunting with my uncles in the mountains of Laos. And when they go hunting, they usually go for days. So my dad told me they would always see someone or something peeking out behind the trees staring at them. And let me tell you, living in the mountains, you barely see or cross paths with people. Because there is no trail, you just walk right into the jungles of the mountains. But back to the story. They will always see something peeking behind the trees, staring at them. So when evening come, everyone will use one long rope or string it and tie it around their waists in case one gets taken, everyone will know. But every night they will always hear them speaking to each other in a language they'd never heard before. They'd always hear whooping noises at night, but never bother them. But anyway, feel like they are being watched. And the only description my dad gave me was the one peeking behind the tree. He said it was five to six feet tall. Its nose looked like a human nose, but the head wasn't a cone shape. Hair was on its body, was blackish. I wish I could give you more, but my dad passed away from COVID in 2020. So all I got was the story he told me before he passed. So this was his encounter with the rock ape. Sorry if my dad's encounter wasn't exciting like others, but this was his encounter he told me. Fang, thank you for sharing this with us. And I'm sorry for your loss, my friend. But what an amazing experience, you know, just one that you you hardly hear actually i've got my dad had a rock ape experience and i've got a uh oops, sorry guys i didn't mean to click that i've got a um a fella that i've got to reach out to right here that had a rock ape experience when he was in vietnam so vang thank you i'm sorry for your dad passes passing away i'm sorry for your loss i mean and um wow just Really cool that he shared that with us. I feel blessed. So, on to the next encounter. Jeff, it took me a long time before I wanted to share my experience. This experience was from 1992. It took place just across the New York slash Pennsylvania border in the central region, west of Pennsylvania, Grand Canyon, and south of the Finger Lakes, New York. I was a latchkey rural kid on a dirt road that was left alone at night whenever dad's swing shift was 3 to 11. And it lined up with mom's 2 to 10 on Wednesday nights. Man, I remember those nights. I, I had the same kind of uh, latchkey kid. I was working out in the basement, which had full-size windows because it was a raised ranch. I feel like I was being watched, but due to the reflection, I couldn't see out. I went upstairs as calm as I could and turned the lights out as I went. I saw a fast motion leaving the window area. I assumed that it was at best a bobcat, at worst a panther. I know both states, DEC, say they don't exist, but I've seen them with my own eyes as several members of my family have as well. When my dad got home, I told him about it. He wanted to check it out. So we went out armed and looking for tracks. We expected to see cat prints. Instead, 
found log, large dog prints in the snow. He scolded me, saying it was the neighbor's Rottweiler, but I remember thinking, no, it was way too big. He chalked it up to my 17-year-old overactive imagination. The following weekend, my mom and I were home while Dad was on 11 to 7. We had a German Shepherd puppy, and I would take him out to do his business one last time before bed, and I heard rustling noise coming from the lower shed. So I grabbed my Bowie knife and walked down with the dog. When we rounded the corner of the shed facing the woods, I saw what I thought was a bear, and it stood up. Needless to say that the puppy beat me back to the door. I didn't get a good look at it, but the only thing I knew of was that big and black that could stand on its hind legs was a bear. Thankfully, it didn't chase me. I went a couple of months without seeing anything. It was winter recess, again alone, during the day, and decided to take the dog for a walk. The neighbors, Roddy, who did roam free most of the time, joined us. We were walking up the dirt road, and I saw the largest creature, dog-like creature I had ever seen, lying in the road. It was huge, and I became instantly terrified. Both the full-grown Roddy and the shepherd puppy cowered when we saw it. The eyes staring at me is what I remembered the most. I backed up without taking my eyes off the creature. It got up on all fours and leered at me. Thank God a milk truck came barreling down the road making it move. I took this opportunity to get back to home. I even had the neighbor's dog inside with me. I watched out the sliding glass window throughout the throughout in the afternoon and saw it. It was sitting in the woods watching me. The entire time the dogs were silent. I went to the gun cabinet to get a shotgun. I loaded three inch deer slugs. It was the best we had. I returned to the kitchen. It was closer to the house. In my mind, I was saying, this is not right. I figured the hell with it. I'm going to shoot it. I opened the door and released everything I had. That thing could move. No way I was going to be able to hit it. It took off over a hill heading towards New York. I reloaded and kept watch, but it never returned that day. After hearing lots of viewers' experience, I am convinced that that was a dogman. There were no coyotes in the area back then, and certainly no wolves. It was way too big to be a domesticated animal. From that moment on, I never went anywhere without protection. I purchased a 3030 and kept it loaded with me whenever I was alone. Wow, what an amazing night full of just amazing subscriber experiences. Let's end tonight with a subscriber experience out of the LBL. Jeff, I'm a fairly new subscriber and I enjoy your channel. I've grown up and still live minutes from the northern LBL Grand Rivers and still live there to this day. My granddad grew up directly in the LBL, the 40s and 50s. He tells us of some wild haunting stories that he and his siblings and, my, and his mom endured. Not only is the LBL home to a two dog man and Sasquatch, but it's extremely haunted with evil entities also dwelling in the area. Now, my granddad and grandma are both buried together at Paradise Cemetery in the LBL, which is close to Hotel California. The reason I'm writing this is because my 13-year-old daughter and I witnessed something very disturbing and frightening while riding one night. We live in dense woods that are directly near Clark's River Bottoms. There are many trails in those woods, and my daughter loves to ride them. It was 10.30 at night. We were on our way back home from riding when something stopped us in our tracks. At this point, we are out of the trails and on the back road on our way home. The back road, however, is still basically in the woods, but just on the road as the woods surround the small blacktop on both sides. This was when we both suddenly heard this very strange sound that immediately got both of our attention. We looked at each other, hoping that it was the other that had made this eerie noise. The best we both could explain it is it sounded like someone or something was literally right behind us with a low growl at the back of our necks. 
After going back and forth with each other about not making a sound, we realized that it was neither of us. Puzzled and now worried, we turned around and headed back to the spot where we both heard the exact same noise to try and see what it could have possibly been. We pull up to the spot with my cell phone to record, our headlights pointing directly into the woods where we heard it. But we didn't see anything. We were both baffled. Because of how real and close the growl was, however, when we watched the video back the next morning, we discovered something that we never thought possible. In the video, you can hear my daughter asking if I see anything as I nod, no. When we approach the area, you can see this thing actually coming out of the shrubbery slash wood line. And when we pan the area with my cell phone, the entity is completely out of the woods, staring at us. I know the Dogman and Sasquatch are cryptids, and there are many different stories of what they can do and what they look like. I'm not sure if this thing had some type of cloaking and when my headlights stripped it of its camouflaging ability or what. I am also not sure if this thing can actually shapeshift. All I know is that we filmed it in its shadow form. It was completely a black mass with some light on it or near its head. The body of this shadow creature is very well defined. I've actually shown the footage to several people who consider themselves very knowledgeable about these things. All of them agree that indeed something with something saying Dogman or Bigfoot and others saying it's some type of reptilian or cryptid. Some have even said they see three or four of these things in the video trying to manifest. In my opinion, it was a Dogman that had some type of ability to change into a shadow form to protect its identity. I say this because there are several people that I know or live in this area that have claimed to have seen the Dogman and or something similar to what I captured. I'm going to try and attach the video along with different screenshots with different settings on the pictures, like exposure and temperature. Thank you, Jeff, for everything you do and the information you give. I'm going to have to email this guy back because the video that he, uh, that he sent, he sent the email, but there was no video attached for some reason. So I'm going to have to email this guy back and see if we can get that video footage up on here because I'd like to see this thing. Also, one thing that he mentioned how it, uh, it was a shadow form, kind of. Let's really think here. Um, what we know about the Rougarou, Louisiana's own shapeshifter, right? Um, Creole lore, the Rougarou is dogman, but can shapeshift to a crocodile-like man, can shapeshift into this black mist, I wonder if it's possible for a Rougarou or a similar creature to be in the LBL. Wouldn't be that strange, would it? I wouldn't think so. All right, folks, I hope you all enjoyed tonight's second half as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. After all, it is your support that helps this channel to continue to grow and go and what makes it a place where people can share their theories, ideas, and experiences without ridicule and without judgment, just simply treated with the respect that we all deserve. With that being said, I hope everyone stays safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real, they are out there, and they are dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the answers, and God bless.